Democrat Congressman Jamie Raskin says former President Trump could become the next speaker. OK, roll it. And one potential candidate uh, whose name has been floated is Donald Trump himself, because the Speaker of the House does not have to be a member of the House. And they are talking about putting Trump right there. If Trump decided he wanted to do it, it would pose a profound problem for their party because they refuse to do the right thing. <laughs> Joe Concha with me now. Joe, that's tongue-in-cheek, yeah. wishful thinking, not serious at all, is it? I mean, it would be in the Democrats' own interest to put it, try to get him as a speaker. It's not going to happen, is it? Oh, of course. Look, I'm not sure how Jamie Raskin is privy to <laughs> private conversations going on between House GOP members, but okay, he can say it on national television anyway not really be challenged on it. But I got to say, though, the most entertaining thing in the history of entertainment, political or otherwise, Stu, would be for Donald Trump to be the next Speaker yes. of the House. Because, as, as you mentioned, Lauren could be Speaker of the House. Simonetti, God help us, or, or, or Donald Trump can. <laughs> you, you don't have to be a lawmaker, right? Now, now think agree, about this scenario for a second, okay? Yes, God help us. Uh, and that's all in fun, Lauren. You know that. Uh, look, imagine this scenario. It's the State of the Union, right? And President Biden is speaking and making statements like uh, the border is secure and closed and climate change is our top national security threat. And inflation is at zero percent. And then sitting behind him in the speaker's chair over Biden's left shoulder is Donald Trump making faces that only Donald Trump could make of disbelief before tearing up the speech at the end, just like Nancy Pelosi. So for that entertainment alone, by all means, please make Donald Trump the next Speaker of the House. But back to reality, it ain't happening. But but one can dream, Stu, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a comedy dream, actually. That for sure is. Hey, yeah. Joe, uh, some college professors have released a, a, kind, of a kind of a playbook telling teachers how to push back on parents who are concerned about critical race theory. What's this all about? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't understand why a playbook is even needed here, Stu, right? I mean, there's not enough lipstick available to put on the pig that is critical race theory being taught in any elementary, junior high, high school curriculum. You want to make it an elective, you want to take it as an elective in college, knock yourself out. But, but the fact that professors are now actually forming game plans in terms of how to push back against parents who say, we don't want this in our classrooms. You look at poll after poll, and they want kids to be taught about basic blocking and tackling, math, reading, writing, science. The U.S. currently ranks to 25th in the world in those categories overall and falling fast Due to the lockdowns. You know who's number one? China. They're eating our lunch again because we're concentrating far too much on teaching kids to see peers through the prism of race instead of preparing them to be competitive in the real world. And Ron DeSantis ran and won in part by getting CRT out of classrooms there, not teaching kids about gender identification, sexual orientation, uh, kindergarten through third grade. Glenn Youngkin also won on education and parents' rights. That's the playbook moving forward. Well, Stu. Explain to me why there isn't more pushback against the teachers' union. I hold the teachers' union largely responsible for the decline in learning throughout the pandemic, and yeah. nothing's being done about it. There's no pushback uh, on Randy Weingarten. Why not? Certainly not. And we're not talking about teachers, you know, who do the, the tough work right, every day. They are beholden, unfortunately, to their bosses. And Randy Weingarten doesn't get any pushback because Democrats will never stand up to teachers unions. They allow them, the teachers union, to dictate everything that happened during the lockdowns, keeping my kids, everybody's kids out far too long after the data and the science showed it was perfectly safe to go back. So uh, the election, for example, would have been one way, I guess, to hold teachers unions responsible. But as we've seen, uh, a very little red ripple in the House and the Senate goes back to the Democrats and you have an unpopular president in the Oval, split government completely, but nothing really moving forward, particularly on holding teachers unions accountable. Especially Steve. on the teachers union. Joe Concha, thank you very much, yeah. sir. See you again soon. Thank you. Great to see you.